Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the organized writer. Because I write and I want to be organized, so when I saw see, so when I saw some people talking about it, I decided to grab the book and see what it was all about. Before we dive in, two ways to support the channel. Number one is to go to patreoncom mikhail support the channel. Number two is to go to slash skillshare where you can take my course on Tick Tick, watch my upcoming courses on Things Three, time blocking, and probably an e-commerce course actually. Buckle up. So to start, like many books in the self-help genre, they've got three sections. Number one is about organizing your time and schedule to make the most of your writing sessions. Number two is about what to do when it's time to write. Number three is about the business side of it. And part three is kind of the weakest in my estimation, but we'll get to that. So part one is about getting organized so that you can write. He talks a lot about productivity systems, task systems, and he actually proposes his paper-based system as the way, and it's the way he does it. So of course it's his book. He's going to tell you the way he does it. And that's a lot of paper and file folders. And I have been like really happy to get away from all my file folders and papers because I don't need to keep them even for tax purposes in Canada as long as they had a scan. So I'm not going to take any of that. But I have been struggling with, and what I really gleaned out of here, I've been struggling with what to do with the research I take, like when I write for GoDaddy or when I write for kind of any site. Uh, I do a bunch of research, find a bunch of articles, like compile them all. Like, how do I really track that long term? And I haven't done a great job. Once or twice, it's kind of bitten me when usually GoDaddy has said, hey, that's great, but can you have a citation for this thing here? And I'm like, oh, I totally know I looked that up and I can't find it anymore. And that's a problem because I got to waste a bunch of time like finding it again. So he had a, a decent system to use where he like filed all his research together. Now he's mostly writing fiction um, or um, like scripts, stuff like that. So he filed all his research in his file folders. And that's OK. Or in his notebooks. And that was OK. But what I've done is I've actually started filing everything in a DevonThink folder. They call it a group, but in DevonThink folder for each project. So under a client project, I will actually file all the research, all the articles. And that's kind of my starting process, scanning an article, filing it off the Dev and Think. And then when I'm actually writing it, I actually go through the articles in Dev and Think. And that way I at least have a short list. I mean, I use everything in every article, but then I've got a short list. If they need to say, hey, what's the reference for that? I can actually go back through, search in the group and find the reference pretty quickly. So that's what I got out of this section is just being more organized. And I use some of his strategies, but then I said, hey, like, let's actually do this in a digital system because I don't want more paper around. The second idea that I really liked in his section on organizing was time blocking. Now, he doesn't call it that. He kind of, well, I guess he kind of does. So he will actually set aside his words for the day. He says 1,500. Um, and that's kind of how he schedules everything. So he'll schedule out for like a month in advance. I'm going to do 1,500 words a day on whatever book, whatever script he's working on. Right? And so that might be 1,500 words a day to edit or 1,500 words a day to write or whatever. It's 1,500 words he needs to do. And if he's, you know, has to write 10,000 words divided by 1500, he knows how many days something will take. So it lets him schedule and he schedules all his writing first. And then he gets to his admin stuff after, which is really time blocking. I love that idea. I actually have a course coming up on it. So watch for that. I'll talk about that here. I'll actually probably start producing some content on it here pretty soon. Um, I really like that. And I liked his idea of scheduling words. Now, the big problem is that if, like you say, oh, I'm done after 1500 words, but like I know some days I've written 1500 words by 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. and then I'm done. Not really, because it doesn't that that amount of words didn't bring in the income I need, so I just have to keep going. Um, some ways to look at that is say, well, that means I need to charge more or whatever. But I like the script for this, right? Including this in the morning, like this doesn't earn me like X number of dollars for exactly because I did it because it's YouTube and who knows exactly how much I'm going to make on it. But it's a good idea. I like the idea of like setting your word count for the day and just being okay with that. Um, I kind of do it as a dollar value for the day when I've earned enough dollars per day. I, I'm just done for the day. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Sometimes I go over. Sometimes I'm a little under. I try to hit that every day though. Now his second section was on getting writing, like the actual craft of it. And I had hoped there was more on the nonfiction side, but he writes, you know, fiction or stories. So not so much. But there again, there was two things I liked. Number one is that quota thing where if you hit your quarter for the day, you're done. Number two is that waiting for the muse to come is absolving yourself of doing hard work. 
Um, Cal Newport often says that when people say they want the muse to come or they had to struggle through writing, what they're usually what they are usually saying is in the amateur writer is saying, I want writing to be easy. And whereas a professional writer is saying, but that is writing. The struggle is the writing. So don't wait for the muse. Just do the work. Sit down and plug out the words because rewriting is writing. Right. So when I did my time blocking course, the first kind of script slash book for it, it is, I don't even know, 20,000 words. And then I rewrote it and I added sections, took a sections out, rewrote chunks. And that's what I did um, yesterday, even on Saturday or on Sunday. And that's what I did on Friday. And like rewriting it is writing. And I think I've tightened up the book a lot just from that. Third section all about the business. This is where it kind of fell flat for me. But I mean, I've been reading about this for a long time, been running my own business for 12 years. So he talks about, you know, getting people to pay you on time and all these other things that it takes to run a business that I, I just didn't get a lot out of. But that like, I coach people on how to run their business for years too. So it could just be that, that I am too well versed in this to get much out of what he said and what he said was not revolutionary. Finally, should you read the book, The Organized Writer? I think that it's got a lot of good ideas for being a writer. If you're not a writer, just probably skip it. Don't worry about it. But it's got a lot of, lot of good ideas for being a writer. I don't love the analog productivity system he uses, but I think that it shows you some key pieces that you can use for your own system, um, whether it be digital, well, it'll be digital or analog, I guess that's the only two. So I think it's a decent book to read. It's one of the better ones on like just sitting down and writing that I've read, right? Um, Stephen Pressfield wrote one. Was that the War of Art? Yeah, the War of Art. Um, and that was okay. It was a lot more philosophical, though. Like, it, this one is a lot more concrete, giving you some good strategies to use to just build a writing career, to keep going out. Um, now, it doesn't get into, like, you know, how to build character, stuff like that. But it's a good as, like, it's a good one on how to run the business side, how to run the productivity side of your writing business. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, you hit subscribe and then hit the bell on YouTube in theory tells you they're going to actually notify you, but who knows if that'll happen. Um, the other way to support the channel is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel or to go to skillshare.c. No, I always do this backwards. CurtisMcHale.ca slash Skillshare. You can take my course on TickTick, uh, my upcoming course on Things 3 and Time Blocking, which I hopefully will record the Time Blocking one starting this week. Have a good one.